All right, my friends. Third map between DRX and BBL. I mean, the stats are crazy, man. Look at this. 16 first bloods for DRX in 20 rounds. That is just... Quite astonishing. Quite astonishing. It's pretty bad for... Um, for any team. Like, I, I, if I see those stats and a team doesn't win... That means that there was some big, 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 big mistakes happening in the gameplay. So, yeah, it's pretty tough, man. It's pretty tough. And also what's funny is that BBR has 100% half buy success in, in this map in a 13-7 game. And look at this. 5v4s. Man, there's only one 5v4 won by BBL just because of the amount of first bloods. Like, it's crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. All right, let's jump into the match and let's see how that goes. Where does it start? Right here? Yes. You know, you've got the, the drone timings, the breach to me is the big one. Look at the because cast. Of course, DRX won this map. Yeah, cast well, definitely well, defines well, who wins. Well, I agree. <laughs> Already actually. Uh, composition. Let's talk about the composition a little bit. We have two breaches. Breach is fantastic on this map, allows you to be very flexible because of the mid range support, by the way. You guys, this is a very good example of mid range support. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, so, when you go into the compendium and you take a look at uh, Breach, where's Breach? Breach is here. Uh, medium range support, secondary defense role. And the secondary defense role uh, shows you that he is able to support another side from being in another part of the map because Haven is just so built. Like, it's built this way, right? When you look at Haven, Breach is going to stand in B-Link, stun A main. But he's also able to flash double dose through this position and is able to flash to A again from B-Link. All of those positions can be supported by the Breach from B-Link. That's just one example why Breach is a medium-range support on this map. I mean, not only on this map, but in general. But on this map is a perfect example that you can be so flexible, you know? Uh, then the other other uh, other uh, agents that we have here, Sova, standard stuff, don't need to like talk about a, a, a little bit. We don't need to really talk about it. Uh, although... The shock darts on double doors will also be here. Very important to destroy traps. I'm not certain actually if Zest was using it on this map. I'm actually very disappointed to not see Zest use more, more of those lineups for Ascent as well. Unless they don't have it for Ascent? Uh, I don't believe that. Um, Jet, of course, because it's required to dash onto sides. A little bit less than an Ascent, but still required. Um, both teams are playing Killjoy. This is the first time we see DRX playing with an actual Sentinel uh, on a map. And... Uh, you can argue that Cypher is also pretty good on this map, but I feel like just uh, potential potential upside of the lockdown is just so much bigger than the Cypher ultimate. So that single handedly pushes her to be the main reason to play this play this um, play this uh, uh, this map. And also remember that the nano swarms can also destroy the opposing lockdown if you combine it with other stuff like the aftershock or combo it for like the lockdown on a retake with the aftershock for the cubby position right like if you guys remember uh if you lock down from this position and it cuts off like this then aftershock from heaven can like literally kill players in this cubby here i don't think i we, we've seen it consistently in any pro games but yeah really aggressive on the pistol and this looks like a walk down mid off the back of fault line flash pressure towards headshot box you can see it now being applied. Kushin is not wasting any time. All that util being used, but he is spotted out. Flash still enabled, forced out as well, just from that one fault line. And so, early little test of how good DRS is. Let's, let's look at this again. Out. Because that's that's something that I really dislike on this map being done by the by BBL, being so aggro on mid, like this is just taking chances that you shouldn't be taking, in my opinion. And as you can see, like literally just used so much util to don't, and they didn't get anything. Right, and they go back to defaulting. But they lost the jet dash, they lost the stun, they lost the arrow, it's like, I don't know, man. 
I don't like those aggressive plays on mid because if the opposing team just playing default with the killjoy, like it's so tough to do anything, to get any value. It's very risky. If you go one for one, you're literally like you're literally throwing because you have to go one up after doing those aggressive pushes and so hard to do it one up. This is actually nuts. The fact that he doesn't the fact that we don't see Buzz die here, he crouches, gets the spam off, and then creates the space by dashing forward is just so nuts he got lucky that he didn't get killed instantly but the support is there like it's actually kind of nuts I mean, look at this look at this he goes in right i'm going frame by frame so this actually takes a while holy shit he was so long alive look they smoke to the it does not much utility use used here right they still have um they don't have the arrow, so they can't really use it to clear it. There's one shock dart, but it's not being used, I guess. I'm not sure why. Probably no angle. Uh, so, Buzz just goes and check this corner, right? One could argue that maybe he should have dashed, but if there's no one here, then he needs that dash onto site. But this is literally like, how on earth is he alive over here? He should have been dead 16 times, but people missed so many bullets on him. He is literally... Yo... Now when I see this, Turco, I think, missed every single shot. And it's, and it's um, Brave who started hitting him in the back. So he literally just dashes away, creates that chaos, and then there's two players going with a follow-up. It does leave it just down to Aslan. And, by the way, this is something that I don't like. Like, nothing against Brun. But saying run and gun in situations like this is very detrimental because the stupid people in chat will, will actually blame the game. <laughs> Valorante, children, government, run and gun. Like, dude, he is literally next to him. He is literally next to him. And pistols have a inaccuracy while being moving like an smg so this is literally just nothing this is this is nothing bad this is how the game is designed to work and this is how cs works exactly the same saying run and gun here as a joke from the casters being sarcastic is unfortunately a joke that is being missed by the viewers because the viewers take this seriously that's something that i really personally dislike and that is a gutting way for BBL to begin because so much of how they won on Ascent was powered by winning the pistol round, right? They won pistol follow up on, on round one and on round 13. And more so than just that, my notes from yesterday, you have a schedule on my Discord. I stream two days in a row, then I take an off day. Two days in a row, then I take an off day. It was a hard one to deal with. So that's the pistol round going the way of DRX. And it sets them off on completely different footing compared to the previous map. Yeah. So it's going to be a very, very different task ahead of them, honestly. The fact that they were able to get those easy rounds in the pistol round set them up quite nicely. Gave them the buffer that they needed, at least. But now What's it's the buy? DRX are in the driving Let's seat. see. Searchly calling for his team for a gamble stack over towards C. I wonder if they're going to push or do something funky. Maybe just sit here quietly. So they are holding the fault line. Yeah, take a look at their positioning now. All yeah. five players. Again, I am so upset. I am so upset that no one buys any util on a Nico. I am so upset about this. Like, seriously. Buy the drone. Buy the aftershock. You have the cash. You're going to buy it next round anyway. Or buy the second flash. You're going to buy it anyway. Is from BBL around here. Two Phantoms, two Bulldogs, and a, and, a, and a Ghost. It's really, actually, risky buy. But the risky buy can pay off if, um, if you play it smart, right? And the thing is, if I remember correctly, this is well played by, by DRX. Even though they lost a little bit of guns, it, it's really well played. But there's a Recon Derby in Primed. I mean, it does look like there's something set here for BBL. They play slow. They play defaulty right here, right? They don't gather any space. They're just waiting for the overpeaks from BBL because they know that BBL likes to play aggressive, so they want to pe punish those overpeaks. And they have good guns to punish overpeaks because they the rifles have very you know good accuracy long range, right? There it is. 
the bait for that contact. And now this stun from... Uh... Wait, what? This is a stun from Stacks. Right? Is it? Yeah, this is a stun from Stacks. That's kind of awkward. That's kind of awkward. Swing and phase, pushed up, Mako's on the corner, but... But they lost one gun, they know about the massive push, but I really like what DRX is doing here. They're not gonna fall back. Trade it out. They're gonna hold this. They know this is the win condition. They know that those guns have to be regained, and they know that DRX, uh, that BBL has to push for those guns. It's actually funny that the uh, I thought that RB is gonna pick up the gun from Omen and throw it away, f away for from the map, but it actually fell there already by default. So that's kind of funny. But I also thought that this is gonna happen, like, and the most likely would have happened, and that gun would have been on the ground. See, he actually checked for it. And now I like that the now I like that Zest is get is going towards the teammates, gonna pick up the gun. That is lying on the ground, the Phantom, right? Uh, yeah. And now they go just punish, they, they go pu push towards C. And here, another good example of trust and understanding of map control. RB holds the sofa while he's droning. And it's also on the first angle. Like, this is where... The Killjoy has only two places where she can stand. Either here or here. If she stands on any different position than those two, then literally Sova is going to get killed. Because if she stands over here, Brave will going to have contact on Sova before the Killjoy will see her, so she dies. If the Killjoy stands here, the same. If, that's it. Like, you need to stand in the, one of those two hey, positions. Like, it certainly is being watched, yeah, even if it didn't catch the contact. So. It is cool, though, to see socially call rounds like this. When... Very well played. Good discipline. IGL, stepping onto the stage for the first time, battling against a team that you really, you know, is more proven than you. Yeah. You don't want to admit that they're better than you, but you, you know that there's more evidence for that. They've got the experience, they've been deeper in tournaments. Yeah, but when IGLs tend to be in that position, it's pretty common to just freeze up. Yeah. To forget your own game plan, to knock on Pearl. You shouldn't be plan. Talked about it, you know, the Turkish jet, this guy's able to just make magic out of nothing. Mm. So stun was being used on A default. Arrow clears uh, A long as well, right really here. High level. The smoke allows like the the arrow clears everything here, and then if and if someone pushed into the smoke, he most likely gets killed by Buzz here. So it's like a trap play being set up. But now they have to re-clear it because they didn't push them itself. So it's like, this is more like a default play than a potential push. Because that smoke didn't allow them to push it out. But because of that, look, 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 BBL is not reading it well at all. This push on C is completely unnecessary because there was no pressure being done on A side after that arrow, after that smoke. So, if no pressure is being done there, that means that the team froze. If the team froze, that means that they're most likely just holding angles. And BBL doesn't read that and go into the angles, right? This is like super, super duper risky. And if you go one for one here, if Mako kills one and gets killed, that's a positive outcome for the attackers. Is aggressive from Turco and Brave. That duo again. It's a double peak, Mako. Just holding the corner. TP's the safety. You can see, like, um, efficiency with the utility here. Anything that they were attempting to try and get aggressive. It really is so aggro. From an Yo, if you want to learn what is defaulting, exclamation mark default. But if you also want to learn, you can also use the exclamation mark compendium. Go into the second spreadsheet, defaulting. I posted all the maps over here with explanations. And you have videos as well about it. Astro in a breach. Oh, that's just a bait as well. A close jiggle. Buzz takes the fight as well. Just swing it at a slightly wider angle. The sight is theirs for the taking. 
But this is going to be a very tough retake. BBL are anticipating winning this round, but no recon dark. Not sure you might have answered this, but do you think theirs is at some disadvantage since they got so many votes compared to other teams with new players and coaches? I don't think so. Like, if, if one would have to think about it this way, I would say that... Um, let me answer the question first. Um, if I would have to judge it from that perspective, Hustlers Creek, I would say that DRX has, has the advantage that they have a core teammates that allow them to play as a team without spending months on practice, while the other teams that are now gathering with new players they will not have the same efficiency as DRX, and counter strating will not give you much if you're lacking in fundamentals as a team. You know? What happened here? Like, Kushner here overheated, right? Oh, that's just a bait as well. A close jiggle, Buzz takes the fight as well, just swing it at a slightly wider angle. Like, th this is this retake is not ready. It's 4v5. But it's like, why on earth is Q... Like, this, 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 is, this is so weird, man. This is so weird. Why he fell out? I'm, I'm trying to understand this. Like, this, the aftershock didn't happen yet. Like, literally, it happens when he jumps down. Like, there's, there's some mistiming over here. There's some mistiming over here. I think, I don't know. It's so hard to read this. None of the utility was being used. Like, see? Like, the Tuco didn't even flash or anything. Was that a misclick? Did he fall out of the window rather than deliberately go for it? I don't know whether he tried to find a timing or what there. Caught on a way, I suppose, by the smoke fading. But I did think it was a bit unusual that he was holding in there. Brutal. Brutal start to the map from BBL, the exact opposite of what they were hoping for. Yeah. And what they had, able, had been able to Hey, Garfield. There's that little... See you around. I mean, that's just great. Really. Yeah, bait yeah. and switch, basically. Yeah. That Sochini falls for. Most of the time, when you grab a bit of information there, you just need to leave instantly. Now drop down to those weaker weapons. Nothing quite so much as a stack like BBL were trying on their last eco, but... Holding with a nice little crossfire, dash up, close and personal, straight through, and a bit of a disengage, just trying to catch the sightline onto Aslan there, just weaving in and out, back and forth. Plant's gonna go down without too many issues, especially yeah. when the smokes start to dissipate. Like, you dash forward, check the smokes, check this place, nano storms on the CD, can't really do much Shot about that. One of their C execs. Prime game in flawless. Now here's the question, can BBL pick themselves up and come out with a response? All of their aggressive movements in the early round have failed. If you look at what was working for them on Ascent, their early round game was, was really powerful. They were up plus six in first kills to first deaths on Ascent yeah. against DRX. And a lot of that, like you said, Bren, was how aggressive and proactive Kushner was playing. He was involved in 43 du uh, 44 duels. <laughs> on that map. ridiculous. That is actually absurd. That's almost two around. Yeah. He's more than a spearhead at that point. He's the entire bloody weapon, but... Now we see them with guns in their hands. So Shock does to clear up the nanosomes and uh, alarm was by the way. You can literally see this right here. Like, this is just a pre-prep utility destruction shock dart. Just in case if the killer has a setup on B. Guns in their hands, so BBL. Smoke on B link. I just kind of like understand the execute here. Flash on the top of the wall. I think it's a little bit like it should have been a little bit higher because this is not getting the player to this backside. But again, look at this pace that's being injected into it. DRX not wasting any time. The back of the side. Oh, dude. There needs to be a one fight for Aslan, but he just does not catch it. It's a great read from Aslan as well. Oh, oh no. And it's fallen to pieces. Good side just side controller, by the way. The like the anti lurk. He does manage to just beam down two players lined up for them, but will anything else be offered for them? Has brought them into this 2v2. Now the aftershock. Lovely angle that's been forced and collecting themselves. 
Just for the moment, now to the that flash unlucky Start timing, man. Uh, dude, this 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 is like Sushin just didn't have the the nerves, man. Didn't have the nerves. Look at the timing, man. Look at the timing. Like this is one. Right now, this is one. Look at the timing. Look, look, look at the timing. He would have won. Hey, one up to the other! There's no shot in hell. Sometimes you have to take the risks, right? Oh, that is a heartbreaker for VBL. The round started so terribly for them, and yet through sheer heroics coming out from Brave and then socially on the site as well, they had actually got themselves into a winning position. I'll be honest with you, I feel like B execute is super risky and it's not like it cannot be as as consistent as the C and A execute. Red Bull clutch, I mean just one of many. speechless. He's eight and zero. Yeah. This time a lot of what goes into B uh, default. I wonder if the shock that will be used. Completely momentum stopping too. Yeah. What's their answer? I mean, I really feel like I really feel like Sovas are underutilizing the shock darts. I feel like under you uh, unless sorry. Unless the Sova needs to be first tempo droning or like using recon arrow for a fast push each round of like that you should be using one shock dart at the beginning of the round to potentially clear one of the lanes you know it's a win the full investment of the money still dropped down to the the light to buy once more they do have vaults to work with but the question is i mean you don't really want to be investing them into a round hey gary how are you doing it does seem feasible oh, and here we go <laughs> get a close drone they know they can catch good luck at least one of the players in fact the two players that were in the back good of the side, luck stunned up i like the fact that they just use the breach really ultimate the they down. just want to get this rolling good plant by the way and look Stax just used the ultimate but he's two out of seven and he just used the ultimate so he's he's snowballing his ult it's so important to understand this like you need you you on a stage like this in tournament games you cannot save ultimates all because it's going to be more valuable on uh, on the next round. And I would argue that in ranked it's even more important to have the same mentality because there's higher probability that your team is going to throw against Ecos than in the pro play, even though in pro play it also happens. That's what they want to go for, no, I actually didn't order Garrett any, any punch keys. Here, I'll be honest with you, I think that Brave misclicked. I don't see a reason why this is a smoke. I'll be honest with you, I think this is a misclick and this should have been a stun or a pull. Like, it actually kind of puts a dent into the plan from Kushner. Like, okay, now I don't see players that are on site. And again, it's a, such a mistiming. Like, they go one by one. You know, Small it's like no one is, is no one is training anyone. BBL might try and come up with and crumbling to pieces, all the options. And the end result of that round is that only Zest needs to buy armor. <laughs> the, so clean, so perfectly, unbelievably clean from DRX. The the prime gaming flawless doesn't even begin to cover it. It's an understatement. You know, at this point, I think that DRX should just ban Ascent. Like, they benefit from the open maps, right? So why just not ban Ascent? What did they ban here? In this map? I can't remember. What was the ban? Icebox? Lotus. Right, right. They banned Lotus. Right. But I also think that Lotus is a perfect DRX map. You know? It really does feel like any given Sunday. Maybe they just didn't feel that it's prepared to their standards. 
Oh, did they different. just destroy the tur turret? No, the turret is on A, never mind. But this is a different scenario for BBL. I mean, listen, they've been... They've been on the brink before. You think about that first half on Ascent, where is Wait, what just happened? Where was that shock dot? They've been on... So Wait, I need to see it. Less true, but... With this Zest is using a shock dot... When? It really does feel like any given Sunday sometimes. Sure. But this is a different that's Sushni shocked out. No, that's Zest shocked out. Why do I hear it in my right ear right now? What? I need to check this. Is it a lineup for double doors? What just happened? He has two shock dots right now. Ah, here we go. He used it from window towards double dose. Okay. But this is a different scenario for BBL. I mean, listen, they've been they've been on the brink before. You think about that first half on a center where it was eight four. They managed to come back in that scenario. So they've definitely got the fortitude to be able to at least bring it back. So drone coming out there from Zest, looking towards A, and that has actually pulled Q shot. Ah, this is this is a very nice run. So here, this is a very nice run. What is gonna happen here is that this like Zest already doesn't have the drone, right? He doesn't have the drone. His lineup is gonna land like this. It's gonna land on backside of C. But be, this is a very nice bait because let's assume that the four players are pushing onto site with RB, right? RB is going to make himself known on site. That will leave Sova stranded on purpose because he's going to be able to lurk, right? To hold flank or lurk because people on the defense will assume that everyone is on site because why on earth would Sova be lurking, right? Just because of this lineup. It's a potential, I'm not saying it's going to work out and every time you do it, but there is potential of tricking your opponents into reading more than is actually shown on the map, the map. you know? Which is rough. Where on earth is this one going? Yeah, that is an odd time. All right, so now we have to like paint a picture about how typically DRX is executing. So typically we're going to see like this. Stun over here, right? Then smoke on CT. Second smoke on garage. Oh, we, oh, those are awful smokes. Here we go. Much better. Um, smoke on garage, right? Smoke on CT as well. That's another one. And then we're going to have paranoia towards platform. Updraft dash into smoke. On top of site here, right? That's gonna happen over here. And Nanosom CT exit. And I think Nanosom over here. I'm not certain actually. Let's see. And Astra pull as well backside. Hey, what I'm talking about? No Astra. No Astra. I'm stupid. Okay. So we have. Two flashes, so no paranoia from Omen this time, actually. Yeah. Okay. And Zest can just hold the flank from that one as well. That is unusual. Can't say I've ever seen that one before. No, no, the, the molly was being used. The molly was being used from, from Killjoy. There was a lineup being used, 100%. Uh, we have two mollies from RB right now equipped. And one molly lineup lands from his position over here. Look, look at the minimap, here. From this position, he throws a molly that lands into the smoke on CT. 100%. I don't know where he's using the second one. That's what I'm trying to see. Where's the second one going? Maybe double dose? I think double dose. Yes, yes. The second, the second molly goes into the smoke in double dose to make sure that no one is pushing out when you're planting. The flank from that one as well. That is unusual. Can't say I've ever seen that one before. You should run. Watched for though. Now that lockdown. And now, now with this ultimate being used on site, 
right? And kill your turret on mid. If it goes by any chance out of range, that can bait people into pushing it. Yeah, no one's gonna look at Sova. Yeah. Such a nice uh, late flank from Zest. Broken once more for BBL. And another facet that was working so perfectly for BBL on Ascent is that they always had the read on where DRX were finishing. I'm not there in the comms with them, and frankly, if I was, I couldn't understand Turkish anyway. Uh, not that talented. No, uncultured and untalented, actually. But what was working for them is that Sorgeny was able to get the read on where DRX were going every round. Whether that was based on whether you know where Buzz was or knife timings or whatever. But here on Haven, they are just sent scattering. Mm -hmm. That round, round <coughs> seven is a great example there. One drone Can you tell what BBL could have done to retake, defend that? I mean, it's one of those rounds where if you leave C out and the killer just takes it with the ultimate, there's a very hard time retaking that because you're sacrificing so much time to destroy the ultimate from Killjoy, then you don't have this f the the uh, the arrow in time, so you lose another portion of time. I'm not certain even if 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 the breach had like full util. Uh, let me check. Turka had full util. But Turk is coming from CT. And they are dying before any of the util is being used. Like, that's that. I feel like that's the biggest problem right now from BBL. Look, look, they're just like, there's an aftershock. There's two flashes. But before even the aftershock or the flashes are being used, only the sun was being used and the server still dies. Like, that kind of makes no sense. Sushi also has the arrow and dies before using the arrow. Look, literally died. Brave. I think literally died while while because he peeked with the arrow. I think that's what happened. I think he peeks out into CT with with the bow and arrow open, and that's why he dies right here. So it's like I feel like the main reason why BBL are just failing with their with their retakes is that they don't have a plan on how to use the utility to make sure they can get more favorable fights. So it's like, so far, every single time I'm watching BBL retake, it's like someone goes alone. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 look, look, I was right. Look, Sova is peeking out with his arrow in hand. Like, that is just awful. And there's an easy way of fixing that. Instead of peeking out with a bow and arrow to shoot this, you create a lineup from this corner that goes like this and bounces. And that's it. That's everything you have to do. That's everything you have to do. Just have either a lineup from this spot or from this spot and you're ready. That's everything you need. Nothing else. But if you if you peek like that with a bow and arrow, you're just asking for being punished. And you're getting punished. And that is a big problem. Uh, not that talented. No, uncultured and untalented, actually. But... Haven? Yeah, I... Yeah, actually. Yeah, well... You can, you can only do that lineup from that position if you're smoking off. Like, if you're smoking off, let's say, right here is your smoke, then I can understand why you're doing, like, no lineup, just straight line. But if you don't, there's no way you're gonna, you're gonna yeah, just I risk that. That's a time out that's been used. It's really tough, but it's really yeah, necessary. It is, at this point. They got good retake ultimates as well. But in the prior round, in round seven, they didn't even get a chance to do that because RB had used a post uh, Ohio had a train uh, derail yeah. and spill like toxic, uh, toxic resources. It's huge catastrophe. I saw your vote of you a few days ago, and thank you for bringing this content to the game. Really refreshing, and I can learn a lot from it. Keep, love your stuff. Keep it up. Thank you, Chiquitai. If you want to help out a little bit, 
Share it with your friends, my friend. And they're stacking the A site. And that's not where it is. You know, again, going off the Sova drone. Zest, Sova drones towards short, and that calls the four player stack to A. And it's just not the right read. It might be against quite a lot of other teams. Not against DRX, not today. Yeah, not too much. Again, the same kind of execute, right? Yeah, that's just. just dude. There by Brave. There's just no, nothing you can do. These nano storms at this time different, but there's just. I don't like this. Personally, I don't like this plant from, from stacks right now because it's like you can only lose this round essentially by being killed while planting. And he plants in the only, only possible spot when he can be dead from CT by a lucky shot. So I, I personally think it's a mistake. You know, I know it's very unlikely to be punished, but uh, 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 buzz, uh, um, yeah. Just play in the smoke there, gets his head taken off once more. Lovely pop flash play and clean up crossfire. A little bit of an overheat from buzz could have ended badly. In rounds like these and the ones before, why Stax is considered the grandfather of the best analyst fan from Korea. Thank you, boss. Is just exactly I appreciate the compliment. So perfect. All of the utility followed up on too. Yinsu was talking about Ascend me in the Turkish map. This is the map I most strongly associate with DRX. Like, yeah. if so I'm BBL, map, I feel like it was just you need to play retake on B, so well By the way, retake B, and just hold your ground on A and C. Yeah. Okay. You need to use like, as much util to like B like let, let's say to be uh, prepared for a push like that and separate the jet from the rest of the team and try to kill her right so the the pole the nanosomes or something and that's that's the, that's yeah that's destroyed the alarm board with just a shock dart we'll rip double dose control now and and if you play like that if you play retake on b and you hold your ground this is actually this is actually nice to see because they i literally started doing that this round i didn't remember that they planted their legs on a deep so they are holding this right very aggressively and then they have two players on c who should be who should be prepared to um stop the push but the problem is that the defending killjoy doesn't have a single nanosome because it was set up on B, and I feel like that's the mistake. Like, you shouldn't have not have anything on B, apart from the turret. It's time enough in a round, though, with 20 seconds, but they know where the spike is going to be. Last known location, just in a lobby. There's only a few more places they really can go, but every avenue is cut off to them here. Yeah. Ten seconds left. They have he broken. They have generational wealth to work with, though. So DRX can definitely commit. Good timing by Aslan here. Fights. Inside the smoke, a bit of spam just to try and break it up. RB. <laughs> that bait with the bot didn't work, but he still gets one man. But they won the round when they played a little bit more proactively, but without inting mid. You know what I mean? Because peeking out of double doors, peeking out of mid is just asking for trouble. But like getting the space on A main and like holding C more, more proactively is is the way that you should be playing this game against a team like DRX. Such a length of time and set his team up for the win, but I don't think that's replicable. I actually think it is. I think it is re replicable. And let's see if they do the same again. Pressure on. And the Haven meta is kind of developing. Usually you see teams, you know, they dump that util into it, fault line something else, push a player up deep so they have that information. Yeah, they're taking the A space. That's super needed, but the problem is now the two players on A, I feel like they shouldn't be standing there anymore. Like, Sova should be rotating off or Bridge should be rotating off. Three players being there, it's it's a problem. What is funny though is that I feel like DRX actually read the situation like a book from the last round and they know they're playing retake on B. So now they destroyed the turret because it's for free and they are. Like trying to put uncertainty into BBL. 
mean, they have fantastic B retake ults, right? The yeah, reach ult is true. just amazing. Usually, uh, DRX picks Astra and they play Haven. What is the big difference between Omen and Astra? I would say that Omen is much better when you play slower paced game and uh, you're able to recur the smokes. It's more, in my opinion, visible on defense than on attack. Because on defense, you're going to be using a lot of one-ways and, and the recurring smokes every 30 seconds are just so important. While with Astra, you're not able to do that as much. Right, so also the paranoia is super nice to stop a push, which is not as um, let, let me say it this way: it's it might not stop a push, but it will get you kills if the players are just ignoring the paranoia. While the astra pull and stun typically just delay a push. So I really like Omen more than Astra on this map, to be honest, when you know that you're going to be playing against a team like BBL as well, because it, it, it falls literally into the way that the opponent is playing, and I feel like I'm not certain if, if they were swapping between Omen and Astra just because of the way that the opponent's playing, but if that's actually a thing, I need to, I need to write this down, because maybe I'll just ask. Because if, they're, if they are picking the controller based on the playstyle of the opponent, that's super 400 IQ, I might be reading it into it too much, but hey, maybe I'm right. Who knows? All right, let me just make a note. Um, DRX is Omen anti BBL. Because I think, I really do think that the Omen falls better in line with, with how, how BBL plays the game. DRX are instead going for a C split. Smoke popped off here now being used potentially to fight this the lockdown is as is due to so much better than omens in my opinion i don't think it's better it's different both ultimates are kind of semi low value though down with a cosmic divide but it does little that one on it but they still want to commit this now yeah well that's our fight this look the the, the fact that they destroyed the turret on b you can see rb getting the lurk after that all being used from this is so huge okay let's, let's break it down again so they destroyed the killjoy turret on b right double dose is being fully controlled by the defenders killjoy no shockdowns were being used by zest for oh wait they were being used but didn't destroy anything okay there's the smoke double dose pushing it through now the ult from killjoy sells her position the There's some miscommunication over here. It's like they're not certain if they want to push or not. They fall back, but then the call is like, no, 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 go, go for it, go for it, because RB, I think this is an RB call, RB tells the, the teammates that he's going to destroy the lockdown. I think this is the call. This is why they get the confidence back. Because of RB's positioning. Look. He took the space right here when this was destroyed in double dose and i feel like aslan has to read on this but i'm not certain what's gonna happen like let's see let's see if rb gets the kill on aslan before he destroys the ultimate yeah he actually gets the kill on aslan before the ultimate there was a little bit of risk involved here like risk management. This is a high risk, high reward play because if Abi fails on getting the kill on Aslan, they waste the ult for nothing. So this is high risk, high reward. And now Astra is just absolutely demolished. Like side is completely out in the open, no value out of the Killjoy ultimate. You know. Barreling their way through onto the site. You were the guy from Game Team playing Fortnite, so right? Well, yes, I did record some content for them. And this is now really tough. Kushin has got to deliver the goods. And timing is everything. There's a dart into the back. He knows where one of them is. That arrow, man. Like, that arrow is really bad. How on earth is it landing there? To stop again, DRX just... Is there any lineup? No, it's just... But there's no need to for a lineup. You just... You should just use it in a straight line, but the arrow lands too low. The arrow lands too low. Look, if the arrow... It's such a small thing, but it would make world of a difference. If this arrow lands in this area over here, Omen is fully exposed. But the arrow lands over here, and it doesn't reach Marco. 
Like, holy crap, man. Look at this. Imagine if this arrow lands oh, just a little bit taller. Execution has got to deliver the goods. And timing is everything. There's a dart into the back. He knows where one of them is remaining. It's Mako still locked My down. My God, down dude. To Suchny. The attacking lockdown. He can't quite find it. There's no angle. Will you again? What? Play Fortnite? No, nah, not really. He's claiming once more another. Not letting it get out of their hands just yet. But this is this is a awesome a huge the RB play. Go through garage. And they're met with a lockdown in their face. Aslan just immediately puts it down. Great idea. Good counter from BBL. And you can see on the player POV of Stax talking to the rest of his team, asking, can we break this? Can we break this? Should we commit with the breed shot? And he's getting fed information from the rest of his team, makes the call as the IGL to commit to it. Lockdown broken, and they get in onto the site. Everything happens so quickly with these top-level teams. <laughs> I love that. BBL using the Vision Strikers strat. <laughs> the flash and dash out in yeah. the grass. BBL quickly with these top levels broken and they get in onto the site. Yeah, but that's not something I like Everything here. Happens like so quickly with these top level teams. <laughs> that, two flashes that. used BBL for no. Uh, also, oh my strat. god. Could, uh, <laughs> why is Kushner equipping his knife? Guys, if you play Jet, okay? If you play Jet, please, for the love of God, if you have your ultimate up, never swap to your knife. The speed of running is exactly the same. This is a mistake, and it's a bad habit. And it and I see it, and I see this actually getting players killed. And also another bad habit that jet players have is when they um, when they ult, the last equipped gun that they have is the knife. So they literally, after whiffing five knives, that. equip BBL the knife the instead of the gun, <laughs> instead of the, the pistol. The yeah. If you can't beat them, join them. All that time ago when they were really put on the map, I think, from plays like that. I'm seeing it. Yeah, Aslan here, like, huge mistake Last with the footwork. Like, he makes he makes noise before going into the smoke, so he literally just kills himself. And Aslan's like, I'm here, just kill me. There was an updraft from Kushner as well, but the players... Dropping still one after the other. Even a shorty just running at them. And what can Brave do? Tries to pick up a bit of an upgrade, but god damn these shot darts. Just not even given an inch. And it looks like Termi, the DRX head coach, gave them an absolute dressing down between yeah. these two maps and told them, unless you beat BBL. I don't really just play that they don't, don't know this. I see too many I'm professional jets doing that. You can change the settings yeah. after you pull out the gun. Yeah, but the pros don't use that setting. What is your role in DRX? I'm a content creator, my friend. Like, this is the first match that DRX is playing, so um, right now I'm making notes on, on the map, and then I'll record specific breakdowns for DRX for the YouTube. Fordham <laughs> trying to play inside the cloud burst brave. He survives for now, but not much longer. The Hunter's Fury is inside the But comprehensively unbelievable. I feel like this is and again BBL. They knew how to counter. How to, sorry, sorry, not to, how to counter. BBL understood how to play CNA. And they made the call. I don't know if it was subconsciously, maybe, or just an accident. But I feel like they they just literally throw how they play the game right now. Because, look, let me show it to you. Astra plays like she is super confident that she can single-handedly hold that entire execute. She has no help from the Killjoy. Three players are playing on A. Typically, typically, if you have a position like this, right, you have three players over here, one here, and one here. That means that you are either aggressively pushing on A, or you're stacking defensively on site, then the B is being held passively and C is being held passively. So the players on C and B are most likely playing either from CT, backside, so they can re go back to CT. The B player is either playing from link or other link to be able to help the other sides. And they play retake on C and B. But the position of the Astra is literally like, I have the confidence that I'm going to take five players on my, on my forehead and I'm going to kill three. Like, 
I don't know. You can't even be that mad. No. You're like, okay, we just got comprehensively unbelievable. No, I'm not planning on recording anything for Gunton right now. Like, like he gets one, but this is not good enough. And he most likely would have been dead if he wouldn't get lucky here. Wait, sorry, let me let me show it to you again. He survives for now, but not much longer. The Hunter's Fury is used to just try and clear the way. Oh, no way. Who kills? Also get Aslan. There's no way. Such need, this is the desperation. Final round, might as well yeah. use him. The ultimate's one after the other. Doesn't get too much done. The Amber shot pushing into the corner, into the angle. On the flank, you should not. Let's get the one kill, but down to that 2v3. How can they make this happen? 45 seconds left and just spraying it down. A bit of panic in the play. 11 1 will be uh, it's, a it's a score line. Like, a, like, that's the main difference here. Like, BBL just didn't adjust well to how DRX played. Oh my god, I don't want to be in Tuka's shoes. 1 12. Holy fuck. Doesn't feel good. Like, you're playing already on a character that doesn't get a lot of kills, but when you're being crushed like this, that's already like. Oh man. Feels bad. Feels bad for him. Uh, Alright, let's see what BBL does on the attack. And let's look at the defense plan from DRX. Oh, look! That's literally what I explained right now. <laughs> see? See how B DRX has the default positioning on, on defense right now? In a 1-1-3 one, one, position? Literally what I explained, right? We have three players set up on, on A side, and then the players from C are playing passively, and they're going to most likely play retake on C and probably have two players on links, so they can either play the retake or play together and help A side fast in case they're being pushed. They have one round as a buffer. Yeah. So two players on B. It is a little bit awkward, man. It's a little bit awkward. Banana swarm drop down. What an opening. Okay. Kushner really fighting hard for that one. Just running. But as you can see, the players from B are already on A. Too bad that every single other player is dead. But yeah. Into short, cleaned up momentarily. Master player is still stacks. Tries to drop. Doesn't turn also spot Dura and see an entrance. Yeah, yeah, it does. One at least. And I think I have slightly a different perspective to Seth on the desk where I don't really think BBL need that many more rounds to feel happy about what they've accomplished. Their pistol rounds have looked good. Yeah. They've actually been able to win a bunch of those. And they've taken a map away one from one of the favorites of the tournament, too. It is just going to be so unbelievably impossible for them to win this map and claw their way back from a deficit like this. Yeah. But I think... Three Vandals, sorry, one Phantom, two Vandals, and two Ghosts. I like this buy because you can pick up the guns easily. Uh, wait. Stacks with no second flash and no no aftershock. At least Zess has everything, so that's an up upgrade. But still, like, there there's some utility missing here. Did the people want all pistol rounds? No, no. In this map, it was 1 1 in pistol rounds. Heaven, uh, sorry, Ascend, they won two pistol rounds. And um, Hell, I'll be clutched the first pistol round. And I can't remember the second one. Actually, mm, Hell. Both pistol rounds won by DRX. So you just really trajectory, I think, of a team like BBL. Now getting deeper into what's left of the series and you know, potentially on the other side of this tournament. Yeah, I think a lot of people were completely counting them out. And that's not what's happened today. No. Side dash from Kushner this time. Let me check. Finally side dashing. Finally side dashing. He didn't get both corners, but he got one at least. So that's something. Sava was able to actually hide in short. 
because of that. Zesta's just slipped his way into shore. They gotta know this isn't cleared, right? Yes. But also, I don't think you really expect the Sova to be tucked. Sun is watching just that one extremity. I don't think Zest is going to be able to win the 1v5 with the Classic, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he gets like two he kills with <laughs> one <laughs> clip of a Classic, man. Okay, BBL with a bonus. This game's BBL pistol round is more important than CS. Go to my Twitter. Uh, I made a thread yesterday about how I think that the pre previous prize of Stingers actually made the game more balanced. I know it's a very hot take, but I do think that limiting the amount of RNG in pistol rounds because you're able to force on both sides on defense and attack with Stingers actually made the pistol rounds less volatile. Right now, with the nerf of the prize, I think it's a buff to the attacker's side and nerf to the defender's side because you're not able to force after you lose a pistol round on defense. Yeah, that Thanos home here is, has absolutely zero point. This achieved no nothing. I'm not sure what's happening here. <laughs> way forwards here just a little bit of poking and prodding towards garage as drx have still managed oh that to missed the llama bot not getting broken seems like that would have been a major win for bbl's macro game and heading back pushing buzz away from the angle buzz though not calling for any reinforcements just yet and yeah they're just holding that is gonna throw bbl off because you would definitely assume that zest or stacks would have rotated today and actually now they do it's just a little later the price increase was needed. I don't I don't actually think the price increase was needed. I think the price needed to be low, but the power level of the gun could have been brought down. See, this is this is the paranoia of like strength. It did hold the push and separated the jet. I'll be insane here. Literally, RB single-handedly rescues the entire round. I'll be honest with you, this could have been actually BBL's round. On, like this could have been BBL's run because Mako was in a really bad spot. Mako is being affected by everything. He stunned, flashed, like then stunned again. Look, and aftershocked as well. And Mako couldn't do jack shit because he had that bad position, right? So the only thing that he is doing here is essentially being a bait for RB. And RB peeks out of the smoke of double dose right here in this moment. Look, look at the mini map. This is nuts. The Jet should be getting a kill freebie on Omen, on Mako, right? But RB gets a kill on Sova. I feel... Uh, wait, let me check. I think... I think Stacks flashed for him. Wait, let me check. Let me check this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, Stacks is coming out of CT right here, right? Stax is coming out of CT. When he's in the smoke, he's flashing the box right here in this spot. Here, right? Uh, and then Killjoy peeks out of that on the contact of the flash. And Abby gets multiple kills because of that. Let's pay attention. Look. There's an assist from Breach. He gets one on Sova. He gets the second one on Brave, who is also fully flashed. And then he swaps and rescues Mako after Kushner got the kill on Breach. Breach paid the price, but Abi just literally just got, got enabled by Breach with a 3k here. So uncomfortable, but Abi returning fire. Left down to Aslan. Like. Without this, I actually felt this was pretty well done by, by BBL. I'll be honest with you. I think this was pretty okay. And you, you know what's the funniest thing? Is that many teams, like two years ago, were playing, like... Many teams, here you can literally see the play. Uh, you can see the flash being popped on the box. The, the red aura here, you can see it on the box, right? So... Right here was the flash. Everyone is flash. AB gets free kills. But many teams, you know what they, were, what they were doing in the past? They were putting a smoke on this box over here. Like, 
like this. There was a smoke being put like like here on the top of the box to counter a potential breach flash. That was like two years ago. And if the RX's goal was to make it just as dominant as Pearl, they would have to convert in this one coming up right now. 13-3. Why such a big of a That's zoom, a though, on that lady? I think a lot of people are going to be watching DRX and feeling really good about the way that they've performed. She was pretty, pretty, though. Not going to lie. But don't zoom. To, for, we don't want to see inside of her nose. So a bit of a lobby control from Buzz, from Zest. Oh, really this. pushed up. This is dangerous. Very dangerous. Only the one uh, detrimental for DRX. Inside, it's not the most ideal outcome. We've seen Crashies go for a overall from this position that got so much value, but Zest decides to play it a little more slowly. He's getting himself into some really tricky positions over a short. Not the best spot for a over to play. Some people play for that. Oh my god. Making sure that they can't quite clear it, but there we go. Now the presence is met pound for pound. RB just trying to push them back. Bad plant, by the way. To do so. Spike is going to go down now, and it is just left up to Mako, who's going to opt to the save. Percentage BBL plays. still with life in them. Yeah. Making this one a closer game than Pearl. DRX are going to have to... But DRX was too aggressive. Like, uh, there was no reason to be that aggressive on A main. And, and Buzz getting Wanda was actually the reason why they're losing the A side. Why is it a bad plant? Very simple, my friend. When we talk about this plant, is... When you plant in this position, you're not able to hold it from long. All of this is impossible to hold. You need to get into this position from here to be able to defend the spike. So you're only able to play from short. And you also have to be like kind of deep on short uh, because this is the angle, right? You have to peek out of short to make sure that you, you have like a possible stop on the, on the diffuse. But if you plant just two steps to your right over here where the dot is you're able to play from deep short because this is the angle for this for the spike and you're able to play from deep long because this is the angle for the spike just two meters difference and it changes the entire post plant entire post plant you know Under window is good too? No, under window is not good because if you plant it under window over here, then it's not for short. But if you plant it over here or here, then it's also not ideal for short. But not only that, you are putting yourself in a huge detrimental position as a planter because you can get easily killed from CT. To take risks and let BBL back into the game? Yeah. They have a team so far that impressed you in any way or was better than expected. I didn't expect Gen G to actually play that well as they played. Breaking Buzz's really extended position. And then Zest also choosing rough on a teammate to play off either. Good for retake. Play retake on out. Singular rifle from Mako, who saved it in the previous round. And this is where BBL should be able to convert. Shocked out coming for B. I think it wasn't ideal. And it all falls to pieces on a thrifty. It's these rounds that are dangerous ones. They. You should be thinking, you know, percentage-wise, should be favored. Yeah, this sitting, angle from Zest with a shorty, yeah, I think he, I think he didn't understand that he has a shorty. Like, not gonna lie, that maybe old shorty would have gotten a kill. New shorty, not exactly. Talon, um, they also played way better than I expected, but not to the same level as Jinji, I would say. And it's not gonna be this thrifty round. Yeah, not now, not today, says BBL, getting a fifth on the board. And making their attacks I know that they won and and Gen G lost, but I do think that there was a stark contrast in the opponents. Two, I would say, in round 16, round 17, just flushing out A. And that's where most of the fighting is happening right now, around that A lobby area. Why is Sova still being played even after Fade came in? Because they're different characters. They have different different roles and if you are if you would like to learn about roles oh boy oh boy oh boy do i have a treat to you type an exclamation mark compendium in chat swap to this spreadsheet and you have all the explanations you need to learn 
with videos. If you want to learn about initiators, there's a link to the video. Watch it and learn. Free! You don't have to pay shit to learn. Quite fantastic, but... Oh, a little dash down short play this looks like. This recon dart lands at the top of short. So, is there going to be a punish here onto Buzz? Doesn't look like it, actually. No, he's out of the line of sight of it, so he's not going to get revealed. And he didn't get contested by Kushina. Normally, teams will sync that up with a jet dash or something like that to put early pressure down short. Yeah, I really, yeah that, that's something that I said yesterday during the watch party. Not yesterday, two days ago. Uh, I really dislike the position that we have seen here on A. Like, both Buzz and Zest are so disjointed from each other. No one can help each other. And Kushner has a great punish on the drone. This is, like, such a great, great punish by Kushner here. He knows that he has, he has the timing, you know? He has the timing there. But he, I, he, he unfortunately made the decision a little bit too late. Look, if he does this, if he does this instantly... Without thinking, but he waited like two seconds, right? If he goes instantly, the moment that Sova drones, he gets that kill. Also, stacks MVP with the stun. Yo, you know what? Look at that. Stacks is playing on B. How the hell does that happen? Ooh, breach. Medium range support. Seems good. That's how you play breach. But the play by Kushner was really... Like, the play is good. The lack of confidence to do it instantly is the problem. Claim the kill. Brave does make it even, though. It's a good punish. And Sushin is leading the team all the way over to C instantly. Look at that. Great read. Great read. Great call. Haven's just got so many opportunities for IGL. His kills are the OP Sentinel right now. She's not OP, but she's the most useful. playground for it. You get the, with that. You're getting a little flavor of this here, too. Oh, Mako has got himself into a wild spot. And I'll be paying for it. Yeah, I mean, TPing into the smoke horse and to spam it, it was RP, like you said, paying for that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. unfortunate indeed, but that locked down. A little bit of lack of awareness now from coming from DRX. I feel like... I feel like they, they in, in some of the DRX players' mind, they went to the trap of, we already won the match, we don't need to try. You know, like there are some plays that really don't make any sense judging it from the way that they played the game before. They just feel like they relaxed a lot and they're not playing it how they should be playing it anymore. You know? At that point, if DRX chose to commit, it would just be to pull out Sochni and Turco's ult. Even with her nerf, Killjoy? Yeah, I think so. Even with the nerf on the Killjoy ultimate coming in with the next patch, I do think that she's gonna be the prime sentinel anyway. But I'm really surprised that we don't see this nerf live during the tournament. But it is what it is. I said they had to win, what was it, round 15 and five more, something like that? Which I think would have brought it up to round eight in total. So seven or eight, never do maths on broadcast, because uh, you will look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was around that number, you know, like. Yeah, it would have brought it up to nine, but that's fine. It was, uh, I mean, eight is nearly nine. It was a rounding error from me, sorry. Right, right, yeah. Operator on the board here for DRS. Yeah, I kind of like this Anna's home, but why is it not being popped? <laughs> it's like way too late. You see this? Like, if that Nano's home is popped immediately as they wanted to, Zest doesn't get this kill. Uh, okay. Right? Yep. And, these are the and by the way, if you're wondering, wait, why the hell Zest is on the operator? Zest is on the operator because Buzz is on the ultimate. You need to be careful of. Despite the buy being a bit weak, I think it's because Buzz ends up having his ult to play with. The blade storm. Fury is beautiful. Unlucky, I guess. But it's still a bit of a weird one. Any sort of a Even in League, they wait to the next phase for the patch. Like in the LSC, the planes were in patch 13.1, and in group phase, it's 13.1. Yeah, but the, this patch with the Stinger is was literally emergency patch. And I think it was a knee-jerk reaction because of what I explained with how the economy works. But the Stinger patch should have not been implemented on this tournament if they would follow their own rules because the rule is... The tournaments are playing with the patch 
after two weeks of that patch. That's not happening with the Stinger nerf. And you never know with these kind of rounds. Your series, your tournament life just could be over in the blink of an eye, but BBL offered a nice uncontested plan. Buzz with the knife, still looking to contest, and then you see that Turkish confidence coming through once more with the gunplay. Unwavering faith in their teammates able to just yeah, and this is like getting uh, iffy, you know? If I'm the RX right here, I'm like, oh shit, we're actually losing this one. We don't have a lot of cash, man. The operator, Buzz with his knives. You know, it was still a half five, but it had a lot of power behind it. Uh, BBL is still really clean. How to balance Cyphers out of the killer and Cyphers is kind, kind of the same pick rate. You need to rework Ultimate from Cypher. I think that's the main reason why he's not being picked more. Certainly feels like it. Because this is getting out of control i think bbl listen i'm not gonna say the usual which is like oh, the what resilience they've shown to come back in this situation we've already seen it over the course of the series i think chamber is quite balanced right now and i if you think a bit you can make crazy gameplay with him but seeing people don't want to think while playing his picket is really low and will lead this right buffing him again i hope not he should get a rec recursion like look you're gonna see pro players still play chamber like like we have seen yay the chamber is still fucking good. He's just not overpowered like he was before. I think at this point, you know, BBL were playing like they had nothing to lose at the beginning of this half because, I mean, they were essentially done. And now maybe a bit of belief, a bit of hope is starting to rekindle within their hearts. Cypher previous old rework wasn't good enough. They got a buff, it wasn't a rework. I think the ultimate... Just look, the main problem of the Cypher ult is that it's reactive. It requires someone to be dead. That is the biggest problem of the Cypher Ultimate. And it's the same problem with Sage Ultimate. Like, I'm not certain why even people are saying, oh, Sage has the most powerful ult in the game because it brings a player back. No, it's not. It's shit. Sage Ultimate is, is in my eyes, really bad because it's a reactive ult. I favor every single proactive ult over a reactive ult. Breach Ultimate. Brimson Ultimate. Um, Kilja ultimate, Sova ultimate, uh, Chamber ultimate, Jet ultimate, all of those ults can be used proactively to create an opportunity. While Sage and Sova, uh, sorry, Sage and Cypher are like, yo, once something happens in game, maybe we get to use our ults. Fantastic. Between them bringing it to that OT. That is their goal. It's within their grasp now, it's within the sight line. Gotta start to believe in this one, but every single You gotta spill so the beans, my guy. New mic is great, but why are you using on it in terms of compression and equalizer? Sound is amazing. I'm using Go XLR, but you can you can get the same quality with cheaper hardware. Uh, like like with Wave XLR. This is just chaotic. But BBL with the rifle still swinging through stacks might have just put an end to it, weaving his way into the site, and it's all down. There was to nothing play. to break down here. It was just full chaos. Just a blink of an eye. It all comes down to this. He finds the one target. Little smoke drop down. Would you not group to fade Ulden there? I, I think I also said fade, but it's like it was just to make a comparison. But DRX were in control of the Alright. 16 first bloods for DRX. And BBL didn't adjust on the defense. I feel like if BBL would start an attack, they would have maybe win the game. Maybe. That was a small chance. But no, I'm not saying no. But they didn't adjust at all on the defense, and they paid the price.